Hello everyone, and welcome back to Crater City here in my very messy compound. And as you can see, the uh, gold farm has now been completed. It is functional. It just needs a it just needs a full cover around it, rather than just being the uh, strip of mostly dirt that it has at the moment. But I thought we'd take a wonder for the most part and see if we can do a little bit more terraforming, because there is a build that I want to add to uh, the place now uh, to sort of conglomerate the storage, because there's a chest in there that's still full of mostly junk, and there's no way that this is coming to. So I need a place to start sending all of the drops, and I have an idea of where it's going to go. Uh, but our topic for discussion today is that of climate change, because um, I have what could be described as an interesting view with regards to climate change. Um, the first thing I think is that we shouldn't be held responsible for it. And I know that there's a lot of people that would more or less draw and quarter me for that kind of statement. But allow me to explain. Animals in nature are constantly threatened by their predators. They are constantly uh, at risk of being made extinct by those around them. And any decently sized population of animals is going to have an indelible and tangible effect upon those surrounding it. And I'm really out of... no, I'm not out of wood. I'm just out of memory, apparently. Um, and what happens is that the animal consumes food, that food doesn't get to go to anywhere else, that food is no longer providing uh, sustenance to the tree or whatever that was creating it, and the trees uh, start to die and the bushes start to die and the animals that otherwise eat that stuff start dying. Basically, every species has an impact on its environment. Some of them, uh, much like human beings, even end up destroying their habitat. Uh, by sheer virtue of they don't have sufficient competition and such, or they go way too big, or they just have even still too big of an, uh, of an impact upon the environment. We actually owe our lives today to some of those creatures. Um, I will explain on that, because I'm sure a lot of people are going to be kind of confused and think that I'm saying that we should destroy the environment. Way back when, when the Earth was just more or less cooling off, um, the only life on the surface, like on land, was basically microbial. Um, there weren't any lizards, there weren't any insects, there weren't even any plants or trees that we'd recognize today. But there was microbes. And at least one particular species of these microbes um, took in the atmosphere that Earth had at the time and exhaled oxygen. Over time, bearing in mind these guys had no competition whatsoever, over time they converted pretty much the entire surface air of Earth. We don't have that atm we don't have that original Earth atmosphere anymore. They destroyed it. And then they died out, because they destroyed their own ecosystem, so they had no way of continuing, basically. They just they wiped themselves out. In much a similar fashion as people might say might suggest that humans are doing today. Now, I do not mean, if anyone should take it this way, to say that we shouldn't care about our environment. What I do mean, however, is that we should not be held responsible for it, because we don't hold wolves responsible for the population decline of rabbits, we don't hold toads responsible for the decline of various flies and wasps and such. We don't hold animals remotely responsible for basically anything that an animal does as just part of its day-to-day -day nature. And as much as people might want to believe that we have done, of, have we, that we have actually done, we're still animals. We have not escaped nature. We're still very much panicky, stupid things. Uh, you need only look to Black Friday sales to see this kind of behavior. We're still animals. We're not remotely transcendent. We're not responsible for the planet due to uh, our being enlightened, sentient creatures in this lightest. No, we're just another breed of monkey. 
we're just another species. And we do exactly the same kind of things that other species do. Which is, we master our, our native environment, we avoid our predators, we grow our numbers, eventually we overpopulate our territories and we look for more. And behind, as such, we have con effectively conquered the planet. Now, there is, however, a reason that we do need to pay attention to what's going on with Earth. And the first and most obvious is our own survival, because the less we pay attention to it, the less we will notice that the weather is changing, that the water is rising, that the storms are getting worse and more frequent. We need to pay attention to our territory, or we're going to lose it. So, the analogy that I can kind of apply with regards to climate change and humans is that of a wolf pack. The way a wolf pack works is it finds a territory, it finds a hunting ground, and it begins to uh, consume the resources there, it hunts the prey there, and its population grows. Um, this is assuming that war goes to plan for the wolves, because of course many things can happen. Al alternatively, they might not know the local weather patterns enough to avoid a storm or a, or a harsh winter, for example, in which case they may want to relocate. But eventually this takes its toll, so if the prey starts to become less common than it was before, and the lack of the plants that, the, that were previously affecting the environment causes certain climactic changes, not on the order of uh, what's happening with global climate change, but significant enough. Um, for example, if there's a couple of deserts in the world that have been happened that have occurred purely by virtue of there being so much predation on the plants that were there. But uh, this, how, this all happens slowly and over time, and eventually the wolf pack catches wind of this. Uh, they find it harder to find prey, they notice the weather getting a bit less uh, welcoming, and they start to have a harder time. In response to this, their first and primary motivation is to find a new hunting ground. Um, usually because they figure they don't have any way of resolving what they uh, what uh, is going wrong, so they kind of just decide to up sticks and abandon ship. Now, again, humans are still animals. We're not enlightened creatures. We're not. Uh, blessed by the divine or any such nonsense. We are animals, and we need to remember that. We are every bit as stupid and foolish and flighty as the rabbits that we- the rabbits and the badgers and every raccoon we kick from our, uh, from our trash cans. So what do humans do? Well, our- we are a creature that is unique only in the sense that we have made the entire planet our territory. It's our- it's our own colossal hunting ground. And we have- we have absorbed its resources, we have, uh, hunted its prey, and we've started to- hello, what the hell are you doing here? We've started to- and why aren't you killing him? Please. And we've started to have an indelible and dangerous effect upon its local environment. We can't stop that. We're now way beyond, in fact, the point of actually being able to uh, prevent climate change from from taking full swing. Now, nowadays, all we can do is mitigate it for the next few generations. But the Earth is pretty screwed. And it's actually a lot more screwed than a lot of people tend to think. Because... There is a destiny for Earth that has been written since the sun ignited. Which is that the sun is a... I believe it's a phase 3 star? I can't recall exactly. But we know exactly how the sun is going to progress through its, uh, through its years. It's currently an adolescent. As it gets older, it is going to get hotter, and it is going to expand. Eventually, it is going to roast away every single piece of moisture on the planet and then it's going to eat it. Earth has a lifespan, and whilst none of us alive today are going to see it, our descendants and our children will. Oh, hello. 
somewhere. So, what we need to bear in mind is that Earth is, and has always been, temporary. It's not going to be there for us to take care of. It's not going to be there for us to look at fondly through a mirror or through a satellite feed. It's going to die. Earth is a pet, in essence. After a point, you, 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 after a point, we are going to have to let it go. So there is a degree to which we have to remember this because it is going to. It, it puts all of our efforts to stabilize the climate in a much more finite and greater and understandable uh, context, which is, after a point, it's all pointless. So the course of action, as far as I see climate change, um, is we do exactly what the wolf pack would do. We look for a new habitat, we look for a new territory, a new hunting ground, and the first point of goal for that is Mars, and so looking at some fantastic stuff coming out of the Mars landing and such, and a lot of new renewed innovation and interest in uh, Mars colonization, so it'll be very fun to see. Mars isn't as big as Earth, so maybe a, maybe try to keep looking for some other places. Gliese is another promising one. But, um, meanwhile, as the wolf pack doesn't generally send to send everybody out looking for a new settlement. It tends to send only a handful of people out, with some scouts, as it were. And while those scouts are uh, out and they're waiting to, for them to come back, or waiting for a sufficient pe period of time for them to believe that they might have actually stopped it on the way, they try to minimize what they're doing. So they ration their food, they spend more time resting because it uses less energy. In short, they cut back so that they don't destroy the environment whilst they're still living in it. And that is the way that I see climate change. I see climate change as a problem that we're currently having to deal with. A problem that we can find a way out of, and a problem that we can ultimately escape. But meanwhile, we have to put up with. Uh, something that we meanwhile have to micromanage, we have to pay attention to. I don't, for the slightest instant, think that we should uh, repair Earth, as it were, with the intention of always being here. I don't think that Earth is our responsibility. Earth has, done ha Earth has been kind to us in the past, but it's not going to be here forever, and indeed the version that we know today is just the one that we spent the most time with. It's not the Earth that uh, that has been for the most for the majority of its lifetime. Human history occupies. Uh, let me see. I think it was if you condense the entire lifespan of Earth into a single day, then we have existed for a minute or two close to midnight. Like the Earth that we have become accustomed to, that we want to save, is just an example of favoritism. Earth has always been changing, and I guess that also stems into how I feel about humans trying to prevent certain species from going extinct. Extinction... Well, e extinction is death on a large scale of a, of a specific species. And honestly, that's very, very normal. It is, in fact, quite strange to find a species of animal that hasn't uh, had to worry about extinction or hasn't gone extinct. And the reason for this is that most times it exhausts its supplies, or it gets out, or it gets uh, uh, killed off by its more efficient and effective predators. Over times, uh, it just evolves into something else, and the old specimens just die off. So effectively, it die, it becomes extinct by virtue of becoming uh, obsolete. In the most positive fashion, I can say that anyway, because people don't seem to like the word obsolete, so it might apply to uh, people. But that's what happened with the human species, in fact. Uh, it used to be that there was a whole, a, vari a whole variety of human species. Now we are down purely to Homo sapiens, uh, which is you and me these days. We used to have uh, 
Homo floriensis, although I think there was some debate over whether that was actually a species. Uh, the hobbits species, as they were called. Uh, we had Homo neanderthaliensis, or the Neanderthals. Homo Heidel heidelbergensis, or the Heidelberg man. Uh, Homo australopithecus. Or is it australopithecus aflorensis? I can't remember exactly. Um, but we are... We, we humans as a species stand upon a very large graveyard. Like, we are just the last, we're, we're just the last ones standing. We're not special in this regard. Now, this does continue on. Um, death is just sort of the natural consequence of living. So, we can't really hold any particular species as sacred. We, couldn't, we shouldn't say that we should guard this species from extinction because it is our duty as evolved man and stuff. Well, no. Species dying out and going extinct is a vital component of evolution. We can't protect a species like that. Honestly, that is, if anything, amoral with regards to the way that evolution works. You are defying the mechanism of evolution, the mechanism that made you, if you are trying to keep an animal from going extinct. Now, it is true, because I know there'll be people who are wondering this, that humans have caused a great number of extinctions. So have frogs, so have locusts, so have horses, so have gazelles and lions. Basically, if you're in the business of living, you're probably going to make someone else die. It's literally the circle of life. Live, sleep, eat, die. We should ideally, if we're going to keep worrying about the climates and such, be wary of causing a situation where we kill off a species that we need to live. So the bees, the the, uh, the bees, the ants, the cows, the chickens, the sheep, the ants, and that sort of thing. But we shouldn't consider ourselves caretakers of this dying planet. And it is a dying planet. It has always been a dying planet. We shouldn't consider ourselves obligated to stay here, because if we want to consider ourselves as a successful species, then we have a clear and obvious ultimate goal. Leave. If we want to survive, then the final the final action that we have to undertake is to leave Earth, to exit this solar system and move on to some new probing ground. This will be probably at least 20, 30 years down the line, probably more, because people are kind of slow about this whole stuff until, you know, their house is on fire from the sun expanding, but... Um... Yeah, I... Look at the kind of species that we're always getting worried about going extinct. Um, there is the panda, there is the tiger, there is the rhino. Why do we care about these creatures? Why specifically do we care about these creatures? I mean, more or less you find the only people who are arguing for the preservation of the white white shark are the people who've investigated it a lot. The answer is because we like them. Because we are favorable towards them. For whatever reason that might be. We are again playing favorites. If you want to protect any species, then you have to protect all species. And if you want to protect all species, then you have to give up this view that you're going to survive for very long. The animal that guards its predators doesn't last very long. And if we want to protect this planet, then we also have to resign ourselves to extinction, because we're going to die here if we stay. It's a cruel perhaps overly coldly logical view of things, I realize, but I don't have any particular attachment to nature in and of itself. I'm a computer guy, I grant you that. I'm biased with this stuff. But it's the cold hard facts. The fact is, we stick around, we're going to die, we protect any species without playing, without just playing favorites upon the ones that look cute or are interesting and fascinating in the scientific context, we're going to die. We're all going to die. All that I do today, for example, will be completely worthless if it is not in the aim of my own survival. Now granted, I've gotten to this stage now where I can be quite comfy. I'm sitting here on a computer, talking to the internet. I don't need the internet to survive. I don't need a computer to survive, although it certainly helps me. 
So you can argue that there is a certain degree of living that we could restrict ourselves to, and it would not kill the planet quite as quickly. We'd be able to prolong our amount of time here that we can live com comfortably whilst we look for the next proving ground. And you'd be correct. Except I'm not exactly certain where you draw the line on comfortable. I'm not quite sure exactly where you draw the line on living. Because I'm... Well, up very recently, in fact, I am making a very small amount of money from this, which eases my capacity to acquire food and such in the month. Someone with a wheelchair or crutches, for example, might argue that they need those to live, but I tell you, I'm sitting in a chair now, why do they need it? Why is there- I'm not moving around at all and I'm living, why do they need it? Well, this is the problem. We also cannot go to other species and say, you should stop doing this because it's killing the planet too fast for our tastes. Magpies and crows, for example, are a lot, a lot of corvids, are quite intelligent and will make tools. Do we tell them to stop making their tools out of the fallen twigs of a tree? Do we go and tell apes to stop using lengths of, <laughs> lengths of wood to probe the depth of the river they're crossing? It's impossible for us to really distinguish what part of us is our animalistic nature and what part of us is an outgrowth. We can't really say that we're not animals, that much is certain. Because again, we're not the only ones with tools, we're not the fastest that we choose here, we're not the biggest like an elephant. No, we're just us. We're just another ape. And I know there's a lot of creationists who would like to say that I'm that I'm an atheist saying that we're apes, and clearly that's uh, that's just being mean and saying that I'm a godless heathen and whatnot, but yeah. So, my view is that we should live as comfortably as we can without sending the Earth into a massive down spiral, and we are capable of maintaining, more or less, our current standard of living in this developed world. Uh, the less developed world certainly looks see to make sure they're working a bit better. But uh, we can maintain this degree if we are a bit smarter about where our energy is coming from. Uh, we need to stop burning the fossil fuels, because heck knows we've done enough damage to getting them all ready. We need to be smarter. We need to remember that there's a giant thermonuclear fusion event going on directly above our heads. Right over there, in fact. So my view on climate change, as I, as I wrap up this little terraforming video, could be summarized in... It is our fault, it's not our responsibility, but because it's happening, we need to take care of it. We need to manage it, be careful with it. We need to stop playing on this notion that we are responsible for all of Earth because we aren't. No species is. Our own destruction of the planet is an outgrowth of us being from it. Earth has been this wonderful cradle, but we need to leave it. And as the sun sets, I'll remind you all that uh, like, favorite, subscribe, all that various fun stuff. And if you've enjoyed me yammering on with uh, these interesting and perhaps controversial subjects, then uh, definitely leave a like, and if you uh, have any ideas of other stuff that I can talk about, then let me know in the comments. And uh, yes, good for Astra. Uh, my dad did remind me when I recently saw him that Ford and Astra are in fact two completely separate, uh, two completely separate car names. Yeah, I am not a car guy, so he's Ford Astra. Uh, and other than that, I'll just catch you all next time. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and or a favorite, follow me on Twitter, and subscribe to be notified of future updates. You can also check out the website where most other content is uploaded. That's all for now, catch you later.